Hi everyone. Well, I'm sad that we can't be gathered together uh, physically today, but I'm uh, glad that we'll still be together virtually at least. Uh, and as we come uh, together, we come together before God on the Lord's Day. Uh, as you all no doubt have already gathered from the reading that we had already in this service, uh, we're picking up our series on John's Gospel as we move towards Easter Sunday. If you've closed your Bibles at home, uh, please do open them back up to John's Gospel, chapter 19, uh, verses 16 to 30. And as you're doing that, I'll give you the main theme for this morning's sermon. Uh, what we'll see, God willing, is that Jesus, the King of the Jews, accomplished God's eternal rescue plan as he died on the cross. So let's pray as we begin. Father God in heaven, uh, we ask uh, this day that the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts uh, would be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, how do you cope watching TV box sets? Uh, you know, the ones that build and build and build until, until they reach the finale where everything is resolved and all those loose ends are, are tied together. Uh, perhaps you're less into TV, but you love a good series of novels where each in each book the main characters are on a, a sort of journey uh, which, uh, from the word go, begins all the way until it leads to completion at the end. Uh, like uh, Harry Potter. You know, in book one we learn that this 11-year-old schoolboy's life has been mysteriously tied to the villain, who he who shall not be named. Uh, but it's not until book seven that we see all of that come to a resolution. Uh, and all that has gone before has been building up to that moment at the end. Well, that's what, that's what we're seeing in our passage today. It's the, the big picture message that John wants us to not only understand, but to believe everything has been building up to this moment that Jesus, the King of the Jews, accomplished God's eternal rescue plan as he died on the cross. Everything that he's been doing has been building up to this moment. Not only everything in John's Gospel, but everything, all of the Old Testament, in fact, all of history has been leading up to this moment. It has been God's eternal plan that everything should draw together to this moment as Jesus died on the cross. He completes the rescue plan, accomplishes all that God has been planning, all that Jesus came to do. Like a TV series finally reaching its conclusion, like Harry Potter finally defeating Voldemort, in verses 28 to 30, John tells us three times over that God's rescue plan has finally been completed. Jesus knew that everything had now been finished and that through his death the scriptures would be fulfilled. And as Jesus takes that final breath, he utters, it is finished. And he dies. It all comes together in this moment. So how has it all been pointing towards this? Well, first of all, in this passage, uh, we see that the king of the Jews is displayed for all to see. The king of the Jews is displayed for all to see. Now, Pilate puts this notice on the, the above Jesus on the cross. It reads, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now, the Jewish leaders hate this. This claim was the reason for having Jesus arrested in the first place, because he claimed to be the king. And so in verse 21, they state that they'd rather the sign say, this man claimed to be king of the Jews. But Pilate refuses. He, he's sort of rubbing it in their face at Jesus' expense. But here's the irony. 
Pilate's sarcastic, mocking sign is actually true. Jesus is the king of the Jews, the promised king, the one that God's people were waiting for, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. He is the king of the Jews. But his kingdom isn't only for Jewish people. Verse, tell, verse 20 tells us that the notice saying king of the Jews above Jesus' head was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. Aramaic was the common language uh, in the region of Judea. The local people could all read on the sign who Jesus was. Uh, Latin was the language of Rome and its military, so the soldiers could look up and read on the sign who Jesus was. And Greek was the shared language of the whole Roman Empire. It's the language that many different people from different countries had in common. So anyone watching from different parts of the world could read who Jesus was. It was God's way of announcing in many languages that everyone could understand that Jesus is the King of the Jews. Everyone, whether they're Jewish, Roman or from other, some other nation, they could understand Jesus' true identity as Heaven's King. And so we... Also, as we read this now today in our own language, we need to ask ourselves, do I acknowledge Jesus as God's promised King? The King of the Jews, Heaven's King, the one everything has been building towards. We should, indeed we must, if we want a place in his kingdom when he returns. But the second thing we see through the rest of this passage is that King Jesus' death does not mean failure, it means fulfilment. King Jesus' death does not mean failure, it means fulfilment. Everything that Jesus has been doing and everything that has been happening to him has happened in order to fulfil what God promised would happen. The whole Old Testament has been building up to this point. Now we don't have time for all the details, but take for example verse 24. Uh, the soldiers gamble as they divide up Jesus' clothes. Uh, but the, because they all want his tunic, they have to cast lots to see who will get that. Uh, John notes that this was fulfilling what was promised through Psalm 22 verse 18 where it says they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. In, in our chapter, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27, Jesus uses some of his last words to make sure that his mother is cared for. And not only are we, are we given a, a little glimpse into Jesus' kindness and his love, but also we are being shown how Jesus fulfilled the law. Remember the commandment, honour your father and mother? Well, Jesus kept it perfectly, even to this point of death. And then in verses 28 to 30, knowing that it has all been finished, in order to fulfil scripture once again, Jesus says, I am thirsty, prompting those looking on to give him a drink. And even that act was a fulfilment of scripture, most likely Psalm 22 verse 15, where God's anointed one is thirsting in the dust of death, predicting how Jesus himself would be. And so with his last breath, Jesus gasps, it is finished. The work that Jesus had been given by the Father is done. The plan of God in sending his Son into the world to die in the place of sinful people is now being completed. And with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Only once everything had been fulfilled and not a moment before that, Jesus gives up his life. It is finished. See, John writing this wants us 
to see so clearly that this is no accident. That Jesus' death does not mean failure, it means fulfilment. This is the final episode. God's plan to rescue sinful humanity has come together throughout all history to this moment. And it is completed in Jesus' death. And so in response, John wants us to see the fulfilment of God's plan and to put our trust in King Jesus ourselves. The one who brings about the rescue of sinful humanity, who dies in our place. Everything has been building to this moment. Will we accept him as our saviour and trust in his death? on our behalf. Leah and I have been watching a TV series recently and we got really into it and we were excited about what ha- what might happen next, about where it was ha- heading. But then uh, the series went on a bit of a downhill and we lost interest and we tuned out and to be honest I don't think we'll ever find out what happens at the end. Well, let that not be the case for you and God's eternal plan. Uh, Here is uh, the final episode, the closing chapter, which everything has been building towards. Don't tune out or turn off. Instead, receive the Lord Jesus, heaven's King. Trust in him who died for the forgiveness of your sin so that you might receive eternal life in his eternal kingdom. Let's pray as we consider that. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your great plan that everything was building towards this moment as your son comes, fulfilling all that was prophesied at the promised king and gives his life in our place. Lord, help us to trust in him for our salvation, for our forgiveness. And help us today to have confidence uh, that that forgiveness is won for us because it is finished. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoy Uh, the rest of our service today.